Amen, everybody. Amen, Amen. Amen everybody. Amen. I was glad when they said that us come into the house of the Lord. Who's glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Because you know that wherever you are is considered the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, I just was listening to that song, Lord, order my steps. That's my prayer every day. Lord, order my steps. Help me to get where you want me to be. Help me to do what you want me to do. And help me to say what you want me to say. Amen. 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 Sister um, Francis, I'm so glad to see you. How are you today? Good. I know it was a press for you today. Appreciate that. The Lord will honor that for you. Amen. Amen. All right. If you stand to your feet and go with me, I'm going to um, open up in prayer. And um, we're going to get right into the word today. Um, uh, you guys, as you know, I'll be leaving on Thursday. Um, and uh, I will not see you guys until after August 20th. So keep me in prayer, okay? Keep me in prayer. I have a lot of other things going on in between those, and there's not one uh, Sunday that I can be in the presence with you guys, but no, I'm, you guys are always in my heart wherever I go. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Father, in the name of Yeshua, we come before you, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you for this time and this opportunity, Lord God, to just learn and hear more about you. Father, we pray that our ears be open, our hearts be ready to receive, Lord God. We bind the hand of the enemy, Lord God, that the enemy shall not snatch the seed, Lord God, of your word, but that it should be planted firmly into our hearts and our minds, O God, and into our spirit, man, O God, where it can grow and, and, and bring us closer to you, Lord, that we will be able to hear your small, still voice and be sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, we just give you all authority right now that you will have your way in this place, Lord God, and each and every last one of us, Lord. Father, we pray that everything be an a, a, a offering unto you from the fruit of our lips, Lord God, from our hearts, Lord God, and help us, oh God, to just be focused on you and what you will have us to do. Oh God, we bless you and we love you and we thank you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers. And I'm, I'm going to read this whole chapter. This whole story actually goes through verse 25, I mean, chapter 25, verse 9. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you what the Lord gave me today. And when I get back, we're going to look into this even more because there's so many goodies in here. Amen. Amen. And the word reads, I'll be reading Numbers 22. I'll be reading the New King James Version. So it may differ slightly from yours. Amen. Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zippor, saw, that all, saw, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many. And Moab was sick with dread because the children of Israel. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, now this company will lick up everything around us as an, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was the king of Moabites at that time. Then he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Beor, at Pithor, which is near the river in the land of the sons of his people, to call him, saying, Look, a people has come from Egypt. See? They cover the face of the earth and are, settled next to, are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once. Curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the diviner's feet, in their hand. Remember that. They, divide, they departed with the diviner's fee in their hand. And they came to Balaam and spoke to him to spoke to him the words of Balak. And he said to them, Live here tonight, and I will bring back word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the prince of Moab stayed with Balaam. Then God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? So Balaam said to, the, to God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent, sent to me, 
saying, look at a people who has come out of Egypt and they cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. And God said to Balaam, you shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the prince of Balak, go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go, to you, go with you. And the princess of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Then Balak again sent princesses more numerous and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Please let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will certainly honor you greatly, and I will do whatever you say, me, whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come, curse this people for me. Then Balaam answered and said to the servant of Balak, Though Balak were to give me all, give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. Now, therefore, please, you also stay here tonight, that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise and go with them. But only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. Balaam, I'm sorry, then God's anger aroused because he went, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Now he and he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way of his drawn sword and his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam stuck, struck the donkey to turn her back unto the road. Oh, so much meat right there. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on his side and with a wall on that side. And, then, and when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either way to the right or to the left hand. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger was arose. And he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me three, these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have abused me. I wish, I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I will kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, I am not your donkey. Am I not your donkey on which you have written ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed, disposed to do this to you? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his strong sword in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, I surely would have killed you by now and let her live. Lord, add a blessing to the reading of the Lord. word. You may be seated. Whew. That was a whole lot in that story. One of the things that we love about that story is how God made the donkey speak. Isn't that what we always talk about in that story? If he can make a donkey speak, he can make anybody speak. Isn't that what we always think about? Do we ever think about anything else in this story? Well, I want to introduce to you three characters in this story today. The first character is Balak. He is the king of Moab. The name Balak means devastator. And then there is Balaam. He is what they call a prophet 
a soothsayer. His name means not of the people. And then there is Israel, the Israelites. And Israel simply means God prevails. So today I just want to offer to you for just a few minutes a little background about how we got to where we are right here with Balak wanting to curse uh, the children of Israel. The Israelites had left um, Egypt by the hand of God. And they had been traveling all through the wilderness. And when they got to this particular point in their time in the wilderness, they came to places in, in the desert where people did not want them to pass by. And so people who felt that they were so mighty and powerful decided that they could come against these people. I mean, after all, they don't have anything. They have no land. They're, uh, I, I, they, they call them, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, the, the, the gypsies, like gypsies traveling around with no place to go. That's what they considered the Israelites because they had nothing. But, but we all know that the Israelites had way more than that. And so when the Israelites would come upon a certain area, the king would not allow them to come. And then they would look upon them as being weak because they had, it appeared that they had nothing. But what happened, they would go out and come against them and fight against them. But the Lord every time would deliver the people who would come against them. He would deliver the people up until the Israelites. And so they would lose the battle. And then they would be able to stay in the land until the next time when they were moving. Well, they had been all through different lands. And then the, the land before they got to Moab, they were, they were at Edom. And what's interesting, that's Numbers 20, 21, 20 and 21. What's really interesting about the land of Edom is, remember, Israel are the descendants of Jacob. Edomites are the descendants of Esau, his twin brother. So you would think when they got there, they wanted to go through that land, and they wanted to just pass through because it, was, it would cut them off from having to go all the way around in the wilderness to get to the promised land, which is where they were going. Well, the Edomites told them, no, they could not come through the land. If you come through the land, we're going to kill you. And so they get to the land, and then they ask them again, well, we won't, we'll pay you for the water, we'll pay you for everything, we'll even pay you to cross the land. They said no. That's just how much of, of a dissension between the two brothers that had, had come about. So they end up going another way around, and all the while while they're traveling in another part, going around a longer way, they, decide, they started bickering, murmuring, and complaining again. So in that particular part of the story, the Lord allowed snakes to start biting on them, and they were poisonous snakes, and anybody who was bitten was, was dying. So then they remembered that they had been against God, and so because of that, they, they cried out again. Of course, God in his mercy and his grace gave them a reprieve again. So now we find them here in the land of Moab. Moab is the descendants of one of Lot's daughter's son, who was the son by an incestuous relationship. Y'all know the story. Lot got drunk, sleep. The daughters, they were just coming out of the, the um, got Sodom and Gomorrah mess and ended up being uh, the daughters were thinking what was going to happen to them so they had relations with their father. And out of that, Moab was born. Alright, so now you have them here at the land of Moab and they're trying to uh, just get to the promise. That's all they're trying to do is to get to the promise. They're really not trying to bother anybody, but when as they began to go, they began to multiply. They began to, began to be more than the other nations. So even if all the nations were to, come to, were to come together, guess what? They could not defeat the Israelites. But people, we make the mistake of thinking it's what we can do in our own might. But the reason why no one could defeat them is because they had God on their side. It was God who was covering them, protecting them. It was God who had the covenant with the Israelites. And so they get to the land, and, 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 and he's fearful now. It's too many of them. He's so fearful that he calls upon Balaam, who is considered a prophet. Now, most of us would think that he's a prophet of God because he's talking to God, right? Is that what, is that what most of y'all think? If he's, I mean, they come into the prophet, 
the prophet is giving, getting the word, the prophet go before the Lord, and then he comes back. And so we thinking that he is a prophet of God. But, he, but the Bible warns us about false prophets. He warns us about uh, uh, people who give wor a word, but it's not really meant for the people. It really is meant for them. And that's, a, that's something that we should be paying attention to today because many people are giving words that they're calling prophecies, and we're giving them money for it. Well, we're going to see what that, where that's going to lead them, okay? So if, if, if you go further down into the story and we're going to pick up we're going to pick it up where he's um, at verse 6. We're going to pick up at verse 6. Um, so we know he sent the messengers to pick to bring Balaam back to him so that he could give the curse the people basically is what he wanted them to do. So the, the, the king of Moab is so so far out of it that he's thinking it really is the hand of Balaam that's allowing the blessings and the curses. Okay, so the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with a diviner's feet in their hand. That right there should tell us that there's an issue there, a diviner's feet. Do y'all know what a diviner's feet is? No? Okay, first let's just talk about divination first. Divination is the practice or of making decisions or foretelling the future by means of reading signs and omens. They consult idols, they use magic, they use sorcery, they use astrology as part of how they determine what they're going to listen to and give to the people. Now God has condemned soothsayer, sorcery, and, and, and any type of divination that people practices, okay? In the book of Exodus, 22:18. So if you go, when we go a little further, you'll see where God will condemn that. Using or operating in divination brings death and penalty. You'll find that in Leviticus 20, verse 27. You'll find where God forbids the practice of divination and where he commands the people to stay away from people who actually engage in it, you will find that in Leviticus 19, 26 and Leviticus 26. He tells us that the, to engage in divination is unfaithful to God and it uh, makes you commit abomination. You'll find that in Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 20. He listed as a sin in 2 Kings 17, 17 through 18. Why am I telling you this? Because even today, listening to people who walk up to you and want a prophecy and then they put a price tag on it, you should stay away from that. Because why do we have to pay for something that God gave mankind to give the gift to give it to you so that you can have an, uh, you know what an expected end is. But yet we fall into that. We fall into that because we'll get in a $500 line to get a prophecy. We'll give $100. You know, and you even so much now, they'll mail you. I have gotten so many texts in the last, what, three months talking about, I got a prophecy, a word for you. Send me this and I'll give you a word. They must don't know who they're talking to. Because I know how to go to the, to the Lord and get a word for myself. Now, God will give people a word. He does that. But why am I going to charge you for what he freely gave to me? And why am I going to keep it from you if it's for you? When I first received my very first prophetic word, it actually propelled me into getting more into the word. Because the first word that I heard that was a prophecy was that you was going to be a prayer warrior. Well, I didn't even know how to pray. So I'm going to be a prayer warrior. But because the man of God told me that's what the Lord told him to tell me, now i got to position myself to walk in the prophetic word that God has. If I did not position myself to walk in the prophetic word that God has for me, then the word can, can be held up. It can take a lot longer, but it didn't mean that the word was not going to come to pass as long as I was in the right position to do what God called me to do. But we want to, we got, we have itchy ears. We want to know, God, tell me this. God, what's going to happen? God, this. If God was to tell you, it, even if he was to tell you your expected end, 
This is how we are as human beings. We still wouldn't even follow in it. You know why? Because we will be looking at what he said, but our, our human nature will get so far in the way that we would not aspire to be what God called us to be. Why? Because we won't deal with the stuff we got in us. This is what was the problem with Balaam. Balaam, God was speaking to him, giving a word, giving him the, the word to curse a person or bless a person. God is the ultimate person who does it, but he gave the word to the person, and, and then he got so, 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 big, so proud and so ahead of himself that he started taking money for it. People would basically pay him to come and do what they knew God had given him to do. So now, he doesn't even know he's outside the will of God because the appeal to his human nature, which is the greed and the pride and the arrogance, all of that got in the way of his relationship with God. And that's how we are in times. How many times have, have, have we been in a situation uh, and we're going in a place and we, we feel, we, this is what we say, well, I really feel like I shouldn't go there. But no, that ain't what, no, I'm going to go anyway. Those are the types of things that God is using to keep us from going into the places that he does not want us to go. And it's real interesting uh, because if you go a little further, he says, he says, he tells, but Balaam tells the people, sit here, stay with me tonight so I can go hear what the Lord says. So he hears the word of the Lord. The Lord tells him, no, you cannot go. He says there are blessed people because they belong to him. Think about this. Think about this. We belong to God. Everybody here except Christ is their Lord and Savior? Okay, so that means we belong to God, right? So God just said that you shall not curse the people for they are blessed. Why are they blessed? They're blessed because they belong to God. That's why they're blessed. Put ourselves in that situation. We belong to God. What does that mean? We are blessed. We are blessed. But see, people want to look at the blessing as, I don't have no worries. I don't have no problems. My job is great. I'm making a lot of money. I got material things. I got houses and cars, money, bank accounts. That is not being blessed. That is what you call the fruit of being a follower of Christ. It's a perk, but that's not being blessed. Because how do we even get to having all that stuff? It's because we're operating in the ancient wisdom and knowledge of Christ. When we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will direct our path. What path will he direct us to? He's directing us to a path of a land flowing with milk and honey, a, a prosperous land, a prosperous life. For us today, what does that mean? It means that we will be walking in the will of God, doing the will of God, and, and, and speaking the will of God. And guess what? All these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then things will be added unto us. But Balaam, Balaam he decided that he knew that he could get money for what he was doing. His relationship with the money and the, the blessed, the stuff and the things was more important than that relationship he had with God. He don't even know how blessed he was just to have God's voice. Okay, you come ask me a question, uh, Miss Francine, you come ask me a question, and I'm, I'm like, well, let me go to God. He gonna tell me what it is. I mean, how blessed is that? That you would have that relationship with God, that someone would come to you needing to know something. Well, which direction should I go? Should I take this job? Should I not take this job? Should I go over here? Should I marry this person? Should I not marry this person? Should I invest in this? Should I start this business? All of those questions can be asked if we have the relationship with Christ. But Balaam, he took the gift that he had and he exploited it. He sold it. He was actually selling the gift that God had gave him. And there's a penalty for that. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the prince of Balaam, go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. And the princess of Moab rose up, went back, and told Balak he refuses. So what does Balak do? Balak appeals to what? All of human mankind loves to hear. 
They love to hear about themselves. They love to tell you how good you are, how great you are at this. He says, I would certainly honor you and do whatever, if you do, if, if I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come and curse these people. Now, my question was, you had this relationship with God, so you knew how important the children of Israel are. Now, every time I talk about the children of Israel, think about yourself. Think about how important you are to God. Think about that. How much he loves you, how much he cares for you, how much because he has a blessing for you. He is a covenant with you. And he knew this. But yet and still, because he never dealt with the greed nature, his human nature, his flesh, his, his, his uh, own desires, he, could, he just forsook all of that. There is a, such a penalty for that. He says, now please, therefore, please, you also stay tonight, and, and, and I will ask the Lord again. So he goes before the Lord again. And the Lord gives him an instruction. But not only did he give him instruction, he gave him instruction, he gave him command, and he gave him a warning. He said, if the men come to you, come to call you, rise up and go with them. But only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. And the word says, so Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princess. What was the command? What was the command? He said, he said, let's go back. He said, if the men call you, if they come to call you, this is what the King, New King James says. Let's see what the NLT says. Of course, it's doing it again. You got it, Byron? NLT? Yeah, which verse? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> which verse? Verse, verse 20. That night, that night God came to Balaam and told him, since these men have come to you, get up and go with them, but, only, but do only what I tell you to do. And who has NIV? All of them say the men had to do something specific before that night God came to Balaam and said, since these men have, have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Okay. And then I'm going to read um, the, King, the complete Jewish Bible. If the men have come to summon you, get up and go with them, but do only what I tell you to do. Alright, so the, the key part was the men had to come summon him. But the Bible says he just got up and he went. He got up and he went. When we don't wait on God to give us the answer, we don't follow his instruction to the letter, all kinds of stuff happen. And so if you go to the next um, verse, it said, then God's anger was arose because he went. Now you would think he told him to go, right? Is that, is that what the, it appears that he told him he, he could go? And then he, his anger kindled, uh, kindled against him. He became mad at, at uh, Balaam. Why? Because Balaam disobeyed him. He didn't tell him just to get up and go. He told him, if they summon you, if they come and get you, all of those translations, there was a key word. But like everything else, we look or we overlook the whole thing, find the part that we like, and then we move on that part. And every time we do that, it will put us in the same situation that Balaam is in now, where the Lord is, his anger was kindled against him. Who wants the Lord mad at them? You know, we don't even preach that anymore, that the Lord can still get mad at us. But the, it's right here. He, we can be outside his will and God don't like it. And because he don't like it, there's things that can happen to us when we're outside his will. He says, the, the, the Bible says, the, then God's anger was arose because he went 
and the angel of the Lord took his stand in, 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 a, in a way as an adversary against him. Who wants to have God as an adversary? Numbers. Numbers 22. We're on verse 21, 22. Who wants God as an adversary? So if he's not our protector, our provider, our sustainer, then that makes him our adversary. Who would want God to be? Look at what he did to all those people who did not honor the Israelites coming through their land. Look what he did to them. He'll move, now he will move, I, I'm encouraged, God will move people out of your way to get you where you want to be. I'm encouraged. Because guess what? That means I don't have to do anything. I'm not going to sit in God's seat. I'm not going to take his throne and try to take things in my own hand. And let me just tell y'all, it took me a long time to get there. Because I always wanted to let people know what I thought and felt. Even today, I almost, still almost want to let somebody know what I thought and felt. But I have to allow God to take the seat and do it for him. If he did it for the Israelites and I'm part of that, that covenant, then he'll do it for me. He'll do it for you. So sometimes we just, we take stuff in our own hand and it does not have to happen. And, and when we do it, because we have so much impurity in us, it will not work out. Something will happen in the end. So now he says, and as he was riding the donkey and his two servants with him, now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in his way. Uh, another question. You got, enough, you got this type of relationship where you can go to God and ask God things, but then you can't see God? Hmm. Why, why can't you see God? What is it that you're looking at? What is it that you're looking for? Because we look through, we look through our eyes through the human part and the natural, but we think we're in spiritual way, but we're not. That's why we can't see God. If God is everywhere, omnipresent, at everywhere at the same time, at all times, why can't we see him? Why can't we see him in our day-to-day -day walk? Now, I'm not talking about a literal physical. I'm, I'm talking about a manifestation of the spiritual. Why can't we see him? You have such a... It's like prophets and pastors and preachers, even just the laymen, people who just believe. I talk to God, he says so and so, but you can't see him. You can't see God in nothing you do. Something is wrong with that. If we, this is so key because we can't be, we should not be looking and be so uh, 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 enthused because he made a donkey speak. He made an ax Float. So what's, so what's so different about a donkey speaking? We can't be so concerned about the donkey speaking when we miss seeing God and what was why, why is he even speaking? Why is the donkey speaking? Because we don't see God. He had to use another means, but his means has always wanted to be through his people. Always wanted to be through us. So how come we can't see him in the things that we do. Why didn't we recognize that when we came up against that roadblock that it was God saying, no, don't go that way? Even think about going a little further and be like, God still cared enough to put those roadblocks up, but you just want to get out your car, y'all know how we do, move it on over to the side, get back in the car like it wasn't there. Or you want to go down the one-way street the wrong way because it's there. Well, I, I, I don't want to have to go all, I, I'm guilty. I don't have to go all the way around, so I'm just going to cut through here. Why? Why did he put those roadblocks there? He put them there because he knew what was in Balaam, Balaam's heart. And he was trying to protect Balaam from himself. Does that mean anything to y'all? You ever get to, to a place where you want something so badly that everything tells you no, but you, you want it so badly, 
that you just go ahead and do it again? How did it work out for you? God always putting roadblocks. He's always shutting down something for us. But we have to be in a posture, a, a position where we can recognize, I believe that this is God saying no to me. And a no can mean not right now because I'm not ready for it. But he knew the greed. He knew the, 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 the pride. He knew everything about Balaam that Balaam refused to know about himself. Not that he didn't know it, but he didn't want to acknowledge it. I don't want to acknowledge that. I'm really not going here. I don't really care. Remember what his name meant. Remember Balaam's name meant not for the people. So he ain't going to be for Balak or the Israelites. He was going for himself. Same thing with some of these pastors, preachers, evangelists, prophets. They're for themselves and we just follow them and we go after them and we, we, we pour into them with seed, money. Why are they always asking for money? Why is it that every time they open their mouth, you hear words like, uh, Glory carriers. Glory. What is that? What is a glory carrier? But they say these things. And we sit there and we're liking and they got thousands of followers uh, or uh, uh, the, every chain is broken today. I can't tell y'all every chain broken today. You know why? Because I know there's some things that you won't even acknowledge we won't acknowledge that we need to come out of. So no, every chain is not broken. And the more that chain is still binding us, guess what? We still are having a sinful nature. Or the things that they say like, I prophesy millionaire over you. I prophesy billionaire over you. How's that working out? How's it working out? Sometimes I'm amazed. I, I, Sometimes I'm amazed when, I, when people open up their mouths and they say stuff to people. And I'm saying to myself, are we really that tore up from the floor up that we believe the lie before we will accept the truth that God is telling us about ourselves? How, how, how do we get to the place where we running, if you still running in church, jumping, singing hallelujah, and you know you still suffering from depression, stress, and all that stuff, and, and they're telling you, oh, you have overcome, the victory is yours. Where is my victory? Who, who want, I want my victory. I want my victory. But I can't get it lying to myself. I can't get it pretending like I don't have stuff that I need to. If God says, if I walk with him, I will, be, I will have the fruit of the Spirit. Where is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. That means he'll teach me how to go through all of those things and still have the joy of the Lord because my hope is not on this earth. It's not in people. It's not in things. My hope is in him. So they, he knew what, what was in Balaam, and he's still trying to prevent him from going to destroy himself to cut the covenant. And Balaam is focused on power, authority, money, stuff, things. You know, I, 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 I'm an independent consultant with uh, paparazzi. And um, it's a very, very uh, lucrative uh, business. And it really can help a lot of people to come out of a lot of things if they really wanted to do it. Um, but at the end of the day, every day that I see what I can do with this business and how, how much I can make with it, every single day, you know what I have to tell myself? Lord, if this is about money, then I don't need to be a part of it for me. Do you know why? Because the money then will become my God. Paparazzi will become my God. Every, I will live, breathe, sleep, eat paparazzi. 
And even though it is a blessing to my financial status in helping me do some things, even though it's there, it still cannot go above God. And just because I have obtained some things by way of it does not make me blessed and highly favored. What makes me blessed is that I'm using the ancient wisdom of God and applying it to that business and following him and how he tells me to go. That's what make it blessed. But the stuff that I can acquire for it does not make it blessed. So when we say things like that and we put, people, we put stuff like that out there in the atmosphere, does that mean that somebody who is poor and destitute is not blessed? Balaam, he didn't, do, he didn't have that. He didn't think about the things. See, everything we do when we was in the world, it will come with us in, when we become believers. God will still use us the same way we, we were so feisty and, and adamant in the world. He will st still use that same drive and desire in the kingdom. But it's how we do it. It's our character. It's, what we, it's the love we show. It's the character of God and, and displaying all the fruit that will help us to live it according to the kingdom way as opposed to the world. Many, many believers, they start their businesses and then they separate business from, from, from kingdom. I don't know how you can do it. I don't see anywhere where anybody in the world, world, world separated their business from be, being a believer. Nowhere. And so they can be all right with being cutthroat, nasty, and, and little white lies, and don't pay this person, or don't pay that person, or cheat on their taxes. They're okay with all that. But when they get to the kingdom, when they're in church, they truly have deceived themselves into thinking that they've done what they're supposed to do. But God says that we will be held account for everything that we do. And being a, a business person in the kingdom has more requirements than being a business person in the world. You have more of a responsibility because who he, he who has much to give should give. And we don't do that often. Even in, even in the church, when you see these pastors, and hey, I ain't mad at y'all because y'all got a plane. I would like a plane because after traveling, where I travel with these airlines, I would love to have a plane. But my plane is not going to be to the, to the expense of the people. And it will be used for the kingdom of God. And they trick themselves, they deceive themselves by saying that they do. And the only person who gets the benefit of those things are them. And that's how we have to look at it. The benefit, he was not for the people. Balaam was not for the people. He wasn't for Balak. He wasn't for the people of Israel. He was for himself. The only thing he could think about is getting what he could get from the king. And that was money, power, and thing. And it is so cool because when I looked at this and I was like, man, there's so many things that we do today that's still in the same story thousands and thousands of years ago. He said, Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on his side. God will put up all kinds of roadblocks. He will use people. Then we want to get mad with people when they won't allow us to do something or won't help us with something. We don't even know that that's God saying, that is not what I need you to do. That's not where I want you to go. We will get mad at them. Stop talking to them. And then they even begin, we start talking about them. Because they would not do something. But we would never look at it as like, is the angel of the Lord standing there with his sword drawn at me? I don't want him smiting me. Why? We don't think, we don't think about God in that way anymore. Oh yeah, God is loving. He is kind. How can we say he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and then don't believe he still won't strike you down? And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. What did Balaam do? He got mad. He started striking at the donkey. And then the next thing to do was for the Lord to let the donkey speak. 
And so sometimes people have spoken stuff to us and we get mad because it's the truth and we don't want to hear it. This donkey was just afraid. He's seeing this big, tall angel of the Lord. And who is the angel of the Lord? Who is the angel of the Lord? He's Christ. You mean to tell me that Christ came to prevent me from moving in a place that God didn't want me to go and I couldn't see it? I, I ignored it? What does that tell me about my relationship with Christ when, when, it, when it happens? I don't want to miss Christ. I don't want to miss God's roadblocks. I don't want to miss his warnings. I don't want to miss his commands. The Lord opened up the mouth of the donkey. And then when that still didn't work, he had to open the eye. Now, that part right there is so full. That's why I pray, Lord, open our eyes that we will see. Even me, I still have to pray, Lord, open my eyes so that I can see. What is it that I want to see? I want to see beyond what I see in the natural or in the human. I want to be able to know what you're doing. I want to see what's happening in the spiritual realm so I know whatever happens in the spiritual realm will manifest in the natural realm. But Lord, if I can see it, then I can position, better position myself to be prepared for what it is that I need to do or what I need to say. The Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way of his drawn sword. And what did he do when he finally recognized this is, Christ, this is the angel of the Lord? He bowed down and he worshiped him. So again, so many nuggets in here. He bows down to God. He worships him. And then he told him, I was going to kill you. I could kill you. And yet, this is so devastating to me because I just said this to someone this week. This, this week, I told them, if this is the time for you to do what you need to do. If you don't do it, you're going to die. Anybody who knows me, if that came out of my mouth, it was nothing but the Lord. I told this person that. And then I shared my own testimony, and I said, the Lord has been calling me to do something, and I feel like if I don't do it, I'll die. I feel like it. We should be in a day and hour right now at this time. This is not season. Not a season. The seasons come and go. But this is a time right now where we have to decide, are we going to follow what God called us to? Because if we don't, we are going to die. We're going to die. Nobody has that sense of urgency. Who, I, who else has in here been feeling that sense of urgency? I got to do it now. I got to do it right now. <clears throat> it's so, and I'm being transparent. Because I, I can only tell y'all from me. It's so, I, I'm I, my car, I'm driving. And I'm, I'm like, God. Just hold it back. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to do it, God. Because it's not just for me what has to be done. It's for the people. Souls need to be saved. People need to know truth. People need to hear the word of God. And I am not the kind of pastor or preacher who feel like I can just come up before y'all and I haven't been before the Lord. That's not, I can't do it. I cannot do it. And when I read this, I have been reading this for a month and a half now. And I'm saying, it's so many ways I can go in this, in this story, in, 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 this, in this, this, this parable. I, I'm calling it a parable because God is speaking so many things in here. He's showing me, you know, I didn't want you to go there. That's why I put that robot there, but you went anyway. Look, at now I got to bring you out of that. Um. You came to me and asked me for an answer. I gave you an answer, but you didn't follow through with how to, to do it. You asked me to bless you to be able to speak before the people, but yet you won't spend the time with me to get the word that I want you to speak. You wanted me to, to keep your children. I keep your children, but then you want to intervene because you got something else to say. Let me have them. 
You asked me, should you take that job? And I told you no, but then you took it anyway, and now you got uh, so much turmoil going on. You deserve it. You deserve it. I gave you the warning. I gave you the command. Now you have to walk out the consequences. I said to you, choose this day whom you will serve, and you still trying to figure out whether you want to serve in the world or serve in the word. That's why you're still being tossed to and fro. That's why you're still walking in. I said that, the, that I have not given you the spirit of fear, but I've given you a, a spirit of power and a love and of a sound mind, but you still walk in fear. I told you that I know the plans that I have for you. It is for an expected end, and you still wonder what is your end. I told you that I am your shepherd you shall not want, that I will make of you to lie down in green pastures, but you lay down everywhere else to give you a headache. I told you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, but you will seek the kingdom of God, but you don't want the righteousness. Therefore, I cannot add anything to you. I told you that you have been given every spiritual blessing to get you where you want to go, but you don't want to operate in them. I told you that you are at the right hand of the Father. What is the right hand of the Father? The power, the authority, the, the, the place where you have dominion and you're able to subdue the earth and everything in it, on it, and around it, but yet still everything is consuming you. I told you these things. I told you this in my word. I told you that I'm your light and your salvation. Well, what is the light? The light is the Holy Spirit. The light is the living Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what the light is too? The light is wisdom. But yet you still want to walk in ignorance. That's what the darkness is. When he's, talk, when he's talking about darkness and light, he's talking about ignorance and wisdom. If the Holy Spirit is in you, and I am the Holy Spirit, I am in you and you are in me, then you should be able to do all things because I strengthen you. But yet still, you walk around like you're weak, like you don't know anything. I told you that I love the world, that I gave my only begotten son so that we can have life everlasting, yet still your life doesn't even look like you in the kingdom of God. I told you that deliverance is the, is the children's bread, but you won't eat it. I told you that in the beginning I created it all, created you in my likeness and my image, but yet still, you don't look like me, you don't act like me, you don't walk like me, you don't talk like me. Is this what the word? This is the word. He tells us in his word something. He says, be steadfast, unmovable. He says, be patient, yet we want everything right now. He said, be loving and be kind. To love your brother, your neighbor, as you love yourself. But yet we hate them. How can we walk where God wants us to walk? How can we be what God wants us to be if we're not operating in his word? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, but yet we just do it in our own strength. Balaam, he was doing all kinds, of, he was just so wrong. He was so wrong. And then he says, I could kill you. I could kill you. Do you know a few chapters before that, God gave Moshe, who was Moses, a command. He says, take Aaron and Eleazar to the mountain because that is where, Elie I'm sorry, that's where Aaron will die. Why? Because he had been disobedient to what God had told him to do. So can you imagine going to this mountain, taking off the garments that God gave you, put them on your son, and the Bible says Aaron died right there on that mountain. Some of us are dying every single day because we don't want to walk in obedience. Do we really love ourselves that much that we're so more important than being with God? Do we love ourselves that much? Are we more important than, than God's love for us? Let me, let, me, let me give you some more things that I have. And I'm just about finished. 
And I, 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 I'm going to go back to this because I, I hear the Lord saying this. And I was talking about divination earlier because that's what they called the fee that Balaam eventually took. So he wanted to operate for the money. Right? Consulting mediums, spiritualists, psychics carries a death sentence. You'll find that in Leviticus 20, uh, verse 6 and, and, verse 20, and verse 27, and in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. King Saul is our example in 1 Samuel 28. Saul actually banished all the mediums, soothsayers, psychics, all of them. He banished all of them only to seek it out when he couldn't have his way. And then, for those of you who believe we're no longer under New Testament, the work of witchcraft, you can find that in Acts 16, verse 16 through 26. And the Bible talks about the work of the flesh in Galatians 5, verse 20. Flesh is the designation for our sinful nature. It is our fallen human nature incapable of of conforming to God's holy expectations and, un, and unaided human effort. We will, our flesh will always be in conflict with the spirit of God that resides in us. An ungodly lifestyle, selfishness, and sensual gratifications will keep the Holy Spirit from leading us and guiding us the right way. Balaam didn't have the benefit of having the living God within him, but he was with him. And because he was with him, giving him guidance, he still ignored that. But we have an, an even uh, um, a different covenant, I'll say, where the Holy Spirit, who is Christ, in us to guide us, lead us, and direct us. He will help us find those things, those fleshly things, that pride and that arrogance and that ego and that greed, that greed nature we have, that, that nature we have where we want more and more and more and we forget about the holy expectations of a holy God. God gives us a command. He gives us instruction. He gives us warning. And then yet still we ignore them. We ignore them. Why? Because we don't practice living holy we practice living unholy. We need to practice living holy more every day. Holy, we're not talking about perfection here. We're just talking about doing right. Knowing right from wrong. Knowing good from bad. Knowing evil. We don't want people coming to us recognizing that there's something in us that would make us appeal to the money or the, 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 our pride. You know, there are people who do that, right? There are people who talk about how great you are. But what they're appealing to is a part of you. And, and, and the humility is the grace to say, thank you, I appreciate that, and keep it moving. But no, we got to stay in it. We want to hear more. We want to know more. We always want to know how great we are. Balaam didn't care about how great he was. He just wanted the money. He didn't care about Israel. First of all, he already knew whether he tried to bless or curse and it wasn't him who gave the blessings or curses. He knew that it was God who had kept them people. He actually even knew what would happen when you came against the Israelites. But he was for himself. And that's how a lot of the pastors and preachers and pe teachers are today. Even us, just people, normal people, we are out for ourselves, and we got to take the time to look at the things in our life that will appeal to us and how it lines up with what God has for us. I don't want to be uh, coming up against a roadblock and mad when God trying to steer me in another direction. We got to know that that's what God is doing. We will only know that is if we're in relationship with him. Relationship means reading his word daily, it means spending time with him, not just asking God for stuff, but actually conversating with him. Like, 
God, I'm, I'm reading this scripture. I don't understand it. Can you help me understand it? And sitting there waiting till he gives it. Spending that quiet time for him. Learning how to practice hearing the small, still voice. So that God doesn't have to open up the voice. Cause what would happen? I mean, I don't know how many of y'all have dogs. But if your dog starts speaking to you, what you going to do? Check myself in. <laughs> Talk to it back. <laughs> That's a real moment. <laughs> hey. But you don't want it. I mean, you can hear the dog's voice, but you can hear God's voice. You can hear the donkey. And I'm like, did he ever stop to think, hey, you know you're talking to a donkey, right? <laughs> no, he just was answering, going back and forth, like never repenting. Why? Because he was so focused on what he where he was going and what he was gonna get that he was missing God in everything. And if I had to say anything for the rest of the day, don't miss God. Don't miss him. Go back and read this story. Read it all the way until chapter 25. It's, it's so much more in here. But if you could get that far, you will find out Balaam actually is, dies in the end. Balak, he acted. Let me tell you what he did. I'm going to go ahead. Go just a further ahead. He knew he couldn't come against the Israelites. So he, even now he's still doing more business trickery. He knew he could not come against the Israelites. But he knew he wanted that money that the king was offering. So he couldn't get the money from the king because he couldn't do what he said he would do. But what did he do? He sold it in another way. Well, all you got to do is send the women and let them co-mingle with the men and they'll all get together and then God will come against them. And that's what he did. That's what the king did. And of course, now the king still got it because even though, and I love this, I hope this speaks to y'all, even though we do wrong, God still wants a covenant with us and he's still going to take care of them people that did us wrong. No matter how they did it, he still took care of them. Don't miss God. Don't miss him when he's saying no. Don't miss him when he's putting up roadblocks. Don't miss him. And don't let that human nature side of you, that sinful part, that, that, that part that desires the things that keep you from the word of God, don't let it rise up. Practice, practice, practice walking in the right way. Amen? Amen. Amen.